Anasazi are a group of Native Americans who lived in the southwestern part of the present-day United States. Anasazi is the Navajo term for ancient ones. The Anasazi lived in an area called the Four Corners. This is an area located at the crosshairs of four modern-day states, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. The civilization that lived upon the cliff dwellings of Mesa Verde lived in Colorado. Unlike other early River Valley civilizations, the Anasazi did not have a body of water to sustain their agricultural way of life. Mesopotamia, Egypt, a number of others, uh, China. All of those are, are complex societies founded in a very arid region. But the key to those places is they have major river systems. Since the region did not have a reliable water supply, why did the Anasazi settle here? There were eight key time periods for the Anasazi that act as a timeline. The Paleo-Indian time period from 10,000 BC to 5,500 BC the Archaic time period from 5,500 BC to 500 BC, the Basket Maker time period from 500 BC to 750 AD, the First Pueblo time period from 750 AD to 900 AD, the Second Pueblo time period from 900 AD to 1,150 AD, the Third Pueblo time period from 1,150 AD to 1,300 AD, the post-migration time period from 1300 AD to 1950 AD, and the modern time period from 1950 AD to present. The Paleo-Indian period is our latest link to Anasazi culture. This period began during the Ice Age at 10,000 BC or earlier. Hunter-gatherer tribes hunted large, now extinct animals such as mammoths, mastodons, and ancient forms of bison. They used wooden spears that were tipped with large stones to bring down the huge animals. Clovis-tipped spears were designed to hunt mammoths, while fulsome tips were specific to the ancient bison. In addition to animal hunting, the nomadic people gathered wild nuts, fruits, and greens as they walked. After being in the area for a while, the Paleo-Indian people decided to settle down in teepee houses that had central fire hearths. This would be the beginning of a long history of the Anasazi. The transition of the Archaic period came when the environment became warmer and drier after the Ice Age. By this time, the megafauna of the Paleo-Indian era had become extinct, so they had to adapt to a new food supply. They were still nomadic, but hunted smaller, more modern animals. The Tautal were the spear throwers that went after these animals. They were tasked with moving along with the herds, and they went from the lowlands to the highlands when winter changed to summer in order to keep up with the food source. Along with the disappearance of the megafauna came a reliance on plants. They started to practice agriculture around 2000 BC, growing squash and corn. As history shows, corn and squash would be the main staples of the Anasazi diet for the rest of their history. The basket maker period was the official transition from nomadic hunting and gathering to settled farming. More farming allowed for more specialized crafts such as baskets, jugs, pottery, and bows and arrows. Sandals started to become a common clothing piece, which would make the treks around the hot clay much easier. 
Mono is a stone slab that allowed the Anasazi to grind their corn effectively. Although there was a crude version of this previously, it was perfected in the basket maker period. They lived in homes called pit houses, which were underground mounds. Antechambers were built to hold dried corns and beans. With the creation of stored food, the Anasazi had much more freed time to participate in more than just food production. The first digging tools emerged, which facilitated a rapid growth in agriculture. Around 500 AD, beans were first cultivated. Beans would join corn and squash as the three most important sources of food in the entire southwest. The Anasazi still hunted smaller animals such as deer, elk, bighorn sheep, and rabbit for meat. However, they did not nomadically follow their food sources they once did. After the basket maker era, the most important period of the Anasazi history began, the Pueblo era. This era is subdivided into three smaller eras. Pueblo 1, 2, and 3. In the first Pueblo time period, the Mesa Verde region grew rapidly. During this time, the Anasazi moved their mud pit houses from underneath the ground to above ground, which was a major change in lifestyle that would be continued. Larger structures above ground were made to support families that lived side by side. Big Pueblo structures or room blocks were lined up in rows. The open area, plaza, was the space between room blocks and the pit houses. Kivas were used as gathering places where people would perform rituals and ceremonies. Hunting, gathering, and farming were all still practiced in this time, but one additional food source arose, the domestication of turkeys. A reason why turkeys may have been domesticated would be because the populations were growing so much that they almost depleted all of the other wild resources. The depletion of resources along with the drought could be the reason why the Anasazi immigrated south and out of the region towards the end of the period. Pueblo II was a period of growth and cultural development. Towns became centers for trade and the Anasazis began to socialize with others. There were areas in the Pueblo villages that could have been used as trade centers, which drew people back. Shell jewelry, copper bells, turquoise, and macaw feathers were the most popular traded goods. There was a large decrease in hunting at this time. The domestication of animals made it less necessary to go out and hunt for food. There was also a shift from dependence on clay to a dependence on stone. Throughout the Anasazi history, clay was used to make most goods, mainly because it was abundant and easy to use. But the Anasazi started to see the value of using stone instead, primarily for its sturdiness and strength. People found areas of ripe soil and were more strategic about food after 1000 AD. They used dams and reservoirs to collect rainwater and developed efficient techniques to combine all of their methods of food collecting evenly to prevent another mass flea. The Pueblo era came to an end with Pueblo III. This would also be the most prosperous of the eras. The increase in stone use continued with the creation of the stone axe. Turkey feather blankets and cotton cloth became the most popular goods. The population grew exponentially, with more than 20,000 people in the year 1250. This caused new cliff villages to spring up. These cliff villages would allow for more people to live in one space because they could live on top of one another. It soon would become difficult to feed the masses. They had to return to a reliance on scavenging for wild plants and they exhausted their domesticated turkey sources. Water had to be stored to ensure that everyone would have some to drink. As the times got harder, people had to abandon their mud pit houses and nearly everyone lived in the cliff villages. By 1285 AD, the Anasazi left the area for good and moved back south to Arizona and New Mexico. Why did they leave when the civilization was at its prime? We have not yet come to a definite conclusion, but there was a devastating drought that occurred in the midst of this era between 1276 AD and 1299 AD. The post-migration period covers everything after the migration out of the Mesa Verde up until modern times. They lived in New Mexico and Arizona with other Pueblo people until the 1500s when the Spanish explorers and missionaries destroyed their way of life. At the end of the Pueblo eras, the Spanish conquistadors arrived. The missionaries wanted to drastically change the way of life that had become dear to the Anasazi. Along with the Spaniards came deadly diseases that would diminish the population by a half within 100 years. In the year 1680, the Anasazi rebelled against their oppressors and succeeded. 
For 12 years, they enjoyed their regained autonomy, but the Spanish came back and reasserted their control. The Anasazi assimilated some European customs into their lives, but continued to live in their block houses and eat their corn, beans, and squash. Currently, there are 60,000 Pueblo Indians living in America. There are 32 Pueblo Kivas in New Mexico and Arizona, and one in Texas. They continue to rely on corn, beans, and squash, and for meat they eat chicken, cow, rabbit, and deer. They even shop in grocery stores and go to restaurants. They meld the old with the new by continuing to use digging sticks that have been used for thousands of years, but also using cell phones. They still live in Pueblo housing, but they now have running water and electricity. It is very important for the Anasazi to continue to pay respect to their ancient culture and for Americans to realize how important they are to the American story.